GM, GM, Beanstalk, this is Bella Beanstalk with your weekly call roundup. This week on the farm, we had a lengthy marketing call on Wednesday and a Dow meeting with Publius's council on Friday evening. Let's get to it. At Wednesday's marketing call, the team had some updates on social media engagement. The engagement's good. The followers and stuff haven't been great, so we think Twitter Blue might help push us in the algo a little more and get us up a little bit. And the month of May looks jam-packed in preparations for Wells. Plan right now for the month of May. Uh, so we're going to do roots. Uh, we're going to do irrigation. We're going to cover all the bean stuff. We're going to put it all under one roof. We're going to put out a shit ton of content about it. Um, so that's what to keep an eye out for in May. The rest of the meeting largely tackled the Mayflower update, walking through each of its component parts, starting with the two-fold Sunrise Improvement BIP, the first improvement being the implementation of a Dutch auction in the field to help mitigate debt issues. Essentially, a period during the first few minutes of each season, uh, there would be a like essentially a coefficient applied, uh, starting at like 0% up to 100% of the max temperature. Secondly, we have the sunrise incentive adjustment, which is essentially a reduction of the bean incentive issuance. You know, so every season, uh, upon the call of the sunrise function, which advances bean stock to the next season, uh, the call of that function, bean stock often uh, overpays in beans in order to incentivize someone to call that function. What part part of what this bit will do is make it such that the incentivization takes into account both Ethereum network conditions and Beanstalk uh, economic conditions. Next up, we had improvements to Silo v3, the first of which being the removal of the withdrawal timer, which comes with numerous benefits. So why is that useful? So one example of a pain point that the withdrawal timer creates is if you go to roottoken.org and you, you are able to mint roots using any stablecoin in a single transaction, but you are not able to redeem from roots to another stablecoin in a single transaction because of that withdrawal timer. It requires two steps. Second, the tokenization of deposits as ERC-1155 tokens. You can imagine, I think, I think the most clear immediate example is, you know, right now there's no market for deposits, but when they're now just 1155s, then any market such as OpenSea, which supports 1155s, will also support trading uh, deposits. So I imagine we'll see, you know, an OpenSea market for, for silo deposits uh, start to be something that, that farmers take advantage of, and, you know, the, the sky's the limit from there. The rebalancing of seeds per BDV for unripe assets. The seeds per BDV for unripe bean three curve should be changed to the same number of seeds per BDV for unripe beans. And the idea is that once that cost of converting is removed, any any unripe bean three curve depositor will be uh, much more incentivized to convert uh, and in the process uh, arbitrage the bean price back towards peg. And the last change being the way that deposits are indexed. The upgrade uh, here is called stems. What this upgrade does is effectively make it so that for every token that is whitelisted in the silo, the number of seeds per BDV can be adjusted dynamically over time without breaking the accounting mechanism. Lastly, Guy shared some timeline updates. We just shared the Sunrise Improvements BIP draft. Hopefully that gets proposed early next week. Silo V3 audit starts today, is estimated to finish May 15th. And the third step of the Mayflower update will require an audit of the Wells Beanstalk integration BIP. And development of that has not finished. Hopefully it will within one to two weeks, after which the audit will start. Looking at like early June for, you know, this, uh, like I said, the final step, which would be whitelisting the bean ETH well. On Friday, April 21st, the weekly Dow meeting hosted Steve, who has acted as legal counsel on behalf of Beanstalk since the exploit last April. Steve, a former prosecutor in the securities unit with the U.S. Attorney's Office, first discussed the process taken by Publius himself and other groups immediately after the exploit. Strategizing how best to 
report the crime and get some action from the government, right? Everybody can file an IC3 form, which Publius took care of doing. But in my experience is if you have folks who actually have been in the trenches, um, we can get on taken more seriously uh, by picking up the phone and using our contacts. So we were retained to help do that, come up with a strategy of how to get the government's attention, how to report the crime and um, try to get law enforcement authorities and prosecutors to investigate and, and aid us uh, and, and Publius and the, and the Dow in getting all that done. In addition to his assistance, Steve also discussed other resources that have been involved and in providing support since the attack. So one of the things we did is we reached out to the head of the Department of Justice's Nat- Na- National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team, a woman named Un Young Choi, who had been in, uh, at the same U.S. Attorney's Office where I worked. She was a prosecutor in the Southern District of New York before becoming um, DOJ's National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team head. So we reached out and made sure she knew what was going on, and she validated and confirmed that there was a team through Ed Davis's contact of both FBI and uh, federal prosecutors already involved in the case. Then we started working with those people, particularly with the federal prosecutor um, who was taking aid on this at the U.S. Attorney's Office in New Jersey. Despite the significant efforts from the parties involved, Steve was quick to temper expectations. Once an investigation commences, you don't get much information. The information you glean are things like, is there a prosecutor assigned to your case? And did they ask you questions? Did they do an interview? Well, we had those things. So we we had their attention at that point. They seemed, they took it seriously. They spent time, um, but then they don't tell us what's gonna go on until they can publicly charge someone, publicly reveal in a public forum what's happening. And the way they do that is through criminal charges or But that's often the next steps. They're not going to say to us, this is what we've done so far. But we we can't tell you anything actually likely means they've they're doing a grand jury investigation. They can't tell us anything. As for next steps, Steve advised against over communicating with law enforcement to avoid straining that relationship, as well as pursuing legal action against groups like Kraken for negligence. Some of Steve's audio is a little hard to hear, but it's still worth taking the time to listen to it in its entirety. Well, that's it for this week. I tried my best to cut this down as much as possible, but I think the lack of brevity is honestly a good example of how much is really going on right now on the farm. And as Publius would say, that's not a bad problem to have. On one final note, look out for a new Beanpot episode dropping this week in the Discord about the sunrise improvements. All right, catch you next week, farmers. Farmers.